Whelan Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities. The winter season is upon us. What help is out there for people who can't pay for the heat? And Christmas at the German American Heritage Center, celebrating the holidays in the cities. Right now, there's a moratorium on utility cutoffs in Illinois and Iowa. And once again, energy assistance is available for those who have low incomes or disabilities who qualify. Project Now administers the program in the Illinois Quad Cities, but that's not the end of the services available to help people. Reverend Dwight Ford, Executive Director of Project Now, joined us to talk about the safety net that's designed to make sure everyone safely gets through the winter. Winter months, it does get colder. The energy assistance program, LIHEAP, the federal money is there. You're dispersing it, but it really depends upon uh, need and, and disabilities. Is that correct? Well, it depends on what month you come to us. Mm. Uh, as of the COVID era, there was a priority period status that was preceding that era. Mm -hmm. It was relaxed during COVID. So starting October 1, when we opened back up for LIHE, we started with the priority periods, not because we wanted to necessarily, it's because of the state relationship we have that is mandated. So our first category of individuals were the bookends of life, uh, families with children under five uh, in the household and uh, homes that had adult seniors over 60 and individuals living with a noted or verifiable disability. And that's the October 1 to November 1st. November 1st, we opened up for uh, additional cadre of individuals that were disconnected or had imminent disconnection. And then December 1st, we'll have the general population. So they are tiered once again. And depending on a person's particular household status or their particular physical need, uh, those priority statuses allow us to take what others would deem the most severe cases or most vulnerable cases first. Is it still first come, first serve? Well, after you get to general population, That's yes. That's what I mean, yes. Um, so once we get to the general population of individuals, right now, if you call today, it's about a three week wait. Our staff, we've staffed up as much as we possibly could and can uh, with the resources that we have, we're running uh, each one of the team members that are taking caseloads are running about three an hour. And if they finish that three, they'll pick up another. That's how back to back. And that's three weeks worth of appointments already pre-scheduled. And, and that's not including those that may walk through the door, mm -hmm. that we try to find time and have our team members, our reception area, uh, individuals that normally are answering phone calls for all types of services are paying attention to those that with LIHEAP trying to filter it. It's, it has our hands full. This is LIHEAP for us. This is our most probably largest uh, serving uh, program. It has probably the most impact. We are on schedule right now for 10,000 applications. Last year we ran very high at 8,500, a little bit over. And we're already on track for 10,000. That's what a 10% increase. Well, starting out last year, we saw 30% increase in not only individuals coming to us for applications, but also 30% increase in the monies that were uh, meted out to their bills. So last year, the average benefit for the individuals coming to us was just over $1,000. This year, because of the 30% rise over last year, the 30% more applications and money going out the door to help so many people, we essentially are seeing an average benefit of about $370.
And so I know that there is a lot of uh, frustration from our community members, not understanding the formula is not set by our agency. It is a state contract. We do our best to move as much money into the homes, into the households uh, that come to us. So we're moving as fast as we can to take care of as many as we can for as long as we can. We'll give every dollar we have out that door. And if we run out, we'll run out and we'll try to find some more resources within the state. But right now we're running, uh, we're running back against the wall. What does that say to you? Because, I mean, you've been a yeah. part of Project Now for a couple of years. Yes. You, yeah. This isn't your first lie heap season either, no. and it just doesn't seem to be getting better. Well, it says a couple of things. One is that the, um, the egg that was once intact pre-COVID has cracked. It will never go back to being the same. Uh, with that said, we're seeing more people grapple with the lingering effect, effects of inflation. COVID still has interrupted um, and has sustained an interruption to many households. I don't think we realize how severe the crack was. And society has not yet fully recovered from the type of injury that the interruption to uh, families and to employment, the monies that came to us for the season it came, we welcomed it. But as many people have already noted, those funds are out now. State governments and federal governments are essentially trying to close the door to the COVID era and face forward. But so many people are still lingering behind because of those impacts. So it says that with the inflation, with the cost of everything rising, with the interruptions and disruptions to the normal status and flow, to the death and departure of loved ones, the uh, mental crisis that sometimes cracked households to a point where families found it hard to stay together as all a part of this rise and increase. I have visited with uh, uh, families receiving uh, LIHEAP funding. Um, and, and what was significant to me was two in particular. One was a uh, uh, elderly woman who lived in a uh, mobile home and it had absolutely no insulation underneath. Absolutely. It, 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 was, it was cold even though it was heated. Yes. I was in a house where the windows were busted open. It mm -hmm. was cold even though it was heated. And I know Project Now also has winterization programs. Yeah. I mean, you can help people in so many different ways to, 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 to better their, at least their lives, their existence inside their homes. Absolutely. So the weatherization program allows us to do a couple things. One is to make sure that the warmth in the home stays in and keeps the cold out or vice versa in the summer, keep the cool in and keep the heat out. Uh, but it also helps us to take care of furnaces, uh, and so this is a major component of what we do. To your point, I've been in homes and have witnessed individuals stuffing uh, shower curtains into cracks in their homes or in the spaces that would be a portion of the roof, trying to keep water and wind out. So our weatherization program is ramped up right now. We are uh, pushing with everything we have. We have a, a list of 70, uh, rather 57 homes. We're gonna finish those 57 homes uh, by the uh, first week in March. We're gonna take a new set and start pumping out again. The wait list is long. Uh, it takes some time to get everything lined up to finish a home. You have contractors, you have uh, architectural work, that mechanical work that has to be viewed. But nonetheless, we're gonna finish these 57 homes. That was our goal for this year, that's projected. And so in another handful of months, we're gonna work as long as the, the warmth is out there. We're gonna figure out how to do our best work inside. We're gonna weatherize these homes and take care of our families. Project Now's mission in so many different ways is to provide that safety net for society, for those that are really down on their luck or those that just have never sure. had any luck, let's say. Is the mission going well? Or is it just getting yeah, harder and harder? So, so two points to that. It is almost a tale of two worlds existing in um, kind of parallel running alongside of each other. One, we see the need continuing to grow. There are additional challenges that most did not see happening. Uh, the impact of an economic reality that hasn't fully turned. We see the numbers and the widening of the gap between uh, the what used to be the middle class is now kind of separating itself to those that are really financially secure and those that are not doing well at all. The federal poverty level, as we know it today, uh, is 
uh, $14,580 for an individual. It is essentially $30,000 for a family of four. We're allowed to serve up to 200% of the federal poverty level. That tells you. Anytime we can take whatever number I just gave you and double that, where in years past we could only do 125% of the federal poverty level or hold the line at 100%. There's so much need. Uh, the great thing about uh, what we see happening and in the mid, uh, the challenges that we have, we see resources still being pumped through our state partners. I mentioned uh, LIHEAP. We work with uh, ComEd. We work with NICOR. We work with Ameren and MidAmerican. I believe we're the only state agency that has those four partners. And because we have a mixture of both rural and urban realities mm -hmm. and suburban uh, realities, lest we forget that there are essentially suburban households that are falling through the cracks as well. They have a nice home, two-car garage, um, beautiful furniture, and they're living paycheck to paycheck and falling backward every day. So I think this type of uh, challenge allows us to focus on maximal feasible participation. We need more people, more thought, uh, thought into this. We need more uh, solutions. We need to do things differently than what we've done before, because if we only continue to do the things that we've always done, this is not going to go in the right direction. We can't just simply say, let's do 30% more of what we did last year. We got to think differently because this is a new, new challenge for us. And new challenges bring also new opportunities and new partnerships, new ventures. Um, Dr. King would say so often that we are degrading and wasting human life, clinging on to old ways of thinking. He goes on to say, there's nothing about poverty that cannot be solved in our lifetime. He said that years ago, decades ago. And we're still clinging on to old ways of thinking, wasting and degrading human life. One of the areas that you're also expanding, and it's so critically important to young families, mm -hmm. is child care services. It's yeah, got to be exciting yeah. for Project Now to be able to offer that because you do deal with so many young families. Well, without question. So our Head Start program has occupied and opened the doors to what is referred to as the Esperanza Center in Moline. It's a beautiful location. Uh, previous uh, owners, Heritage Church, had a wonderful daycare there. That was a dual language. And before that, it was, of course, a a uh, elementary school that the school district had of the city of Moline. And so what we've been able to do is return it back to its former state, having children and families inside of that building. Uh, we have capacity up to 80, 85 uh, children. Once we reach full capacity, doors are open. We're enrolling every day. We did our Head Start high five to welcome them last week. And as the kids were coming in, we have given them all high fives and the parents. Uh, we've done some press conferences in the past. We, we are very appreciative of our partners with the city of Moline that also uh, partnered with us and made a financial investment to assist us with some of the, the renovation work or the work that we had to get done to make sure we clear DCFS and also the fire marshal. We're just excited. Whenever you bring families back together, whenever our focus is on children, education, and particularly that for early childhood education is the escalator up and out of poverty. So if we can get families routed on and get children routed on very early, the chances of them coming out of poverty are greatly enhanced. And because our Head Start is not a standalone, we wrap around the services of all of our agencies. So once you qualify for Head Start, you essentially qualify for everything Project Now. So those families are Project Now families, and we wrap the entire agency. So LIHEAP, uh, weatherization, all of our programs with our seniors, uh, if they have seasoned adults in their homes, uh, our education benefits, our assistance with dental work, our assistance with assisting with automotive repairs so they can keep their job and make their uh, commitments on time. All of that wraps around these families. And so I'm hopeful. You're able to find a building. You're able to find the brick and mortar, but it's tough to find the people. Is, yeah. is it, has it been difficult to find the daycare provider, so to speak? Well, I will say for industry-wide, yes. I would say, uh, honestly, that has not been our challenge. I'm very thankful for the team that Andrea uh, Flannery and our Head Start director and team. They found some wonderful, wonderful candidates for us, and we piped them through and got them uh, kind of geared up for us now. They're on site. Huge. It has been. And when we talk to our friends in Region 5, which includes uh, Indiana and, of course, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, 
Ohio and uh, Michigan and Minnesota, that's not the case for some of our sister states. They don't have enough drivers. They don't have enough staff. And some of them, unfortunately, had to close their head starts. This hasn't been our challenge. Our biggest challenge was actually finding buildings. And so our challenge is what took two years for this project to, to materialize. We launched our, our program last May in Alito. It took almost two and a half years to find a new building in that community as well. So our biggest challenge wasn't staff. It was actually buildings and sites that could be cleared. As long as we're talking about buildings, sure, you're getting ready to move as well. I mean, you, you, you've had that small little project now building in Rock Island. Sure. And I know you have offices right. elsewhere, but I always sure. think of the Rock Island <laughs> office. Right. You're going to be moving. The services are all going to be moving. Tell me about the timeline for that. So for those that don't know, the um, site formerly and still remains known as Starcrest on 19th Street, just two blocks from where we currently are, a little closer to the river. Uh, it's a Class A commercial building, and we are very proud of the fact that we're moving. One is because we not only dignify our customers and clients with the wonderful service, we're not a perfect agency, but we're bent in the right direction. If we miss it, we own up to it. We're sensitive to what is said uh, over the desk, we're empathetic, we try to draw close and near, we do our best work, not necessarily always online or the phone calls, but person to person. And uh, we enjoy that, that exchange. When I come into that building and I see long lines stretched almost outside, people standing and there's nowhere for them to sit. They have children in tow with them, a seasoned adult that's trying to balance themselves on leaning on a wall or with a cane or individuals that has had a long days of work and they're pulling up, they're stretched and stressed, and uh, there's no place for them to kind of sit and center themselves. We dignify people with the buildings they have to come to. And I want a first class building so that we can match our first class services and treat people as full citizens and people of dignity, value, and worth. Our thanks to Reverend Dwight Ford, Executive Director of Project Now. And to find out the other services available to you, go to projectnow.org. In the Iowa Quad Cities, contact the Community Action Agency of Eastern Iowa. Last year, we got a chance to feature the Western Illinois University School of Music Woodwind Faculty. It's a group of five professors who took to the stage for a woodwind collage of music. We're happy to share their holiday sounds with you yet again. Here's the woodwind collage with For Noel, Angels We Have Heard on High. The Western Illinois University School of Music Woodwind Faculty with For Noel. It is Christmas time, and the German American Heritage Center is taking time to mark the holidays in a special way. And it's the first Christmas for the center's new executive director, Brian Allen, who joined us to talk about the events waiting for you at the foot of the Centennial Bridge. German American Heritage Center, of course, I mean, the German experience is so linked 
It to is. Christmas. This is an amazing time of year for you guys. Yeah, we are, we're excited right now. We're gearing up with the Creative Arts Academy on preparing our window display, which is the advent, the giant advent windows. Everybody loves coming down the Centennial Bridge and seeing that. I yeah. mean, it really is kind of a, a hallmark for the German American Heritage Center yeah. this time of year. It's such a neat project. So the students get to work with Edwards Creative out of Milan and understand what it is to be designers and have a client. They also get to see their production and how they do it there. And so they're working kind of through all the different steps. And that's just for the communication and media arts students. There's also other disciplines within the Creative Arts Academy that get to take place down at our museum. The thing about the German American Heritage Center is the history of the Standard Hotel, which is yeah. that building. That was where so many German immigrants to the Quad Cities, that was the first place they right. came. Um, and so. In, it, there's a lot of museums like the, the Figgy or the Putnam. The building isn't the museum, but in so many ways, that building is the museum. It, it right. encompasses the German experience. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's directly linked to our mission. So it's it's pretty exciting, you know, when we get to walk people through the space, stop at a room that we have, actually has the same floor plan, the same footprint as a German immigrant hotel room. And we can say, yeah, people would stay here when they would first come to the Quad Cities. This is the exact size of the room we know because when we did our renovations here, and it's the same subfloor that's there, and this is the size of a room, and it's great to be able to tell that story in such a tangible way. Yeah, well, and it's great to keep that piece of history still alive, is it not? Yeah, of course. Critically that's what we're all important. about, yeah. I do know that one of your holiday exhibits is Classics for Kinder. Uh, German toys, yeah. which once again is perfect for these holiday seasons. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I don't think we actually thought about it as a holiday exhibition, but it's pretty great to have toys up while it's the holiday season. We, I think we were really hopeful just to tell the story of uh, Germans as toy manufacturers and the impact that those toys had here in the United States. You know, they were the leading toy manufacturer for hundreds of years and uh, pretty much, I think, leading up to the wars. And then uh, you know, now everything's made in China. But <laughs> where did you where did you get the uh, collection? I mean, where did uh, the toys come from? Yes, yeah, some of them came from our collection. Okay. We have many dolls on loan from the Doll Museum in Rock Island. Some came from some private collections um, from people in the community. And, so some are yeah. quite old, are they not? They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you touch them? Yeah. Or are they behind, they're, they're behind glass yeah, no, or the they're, untouchable. Yeah, they're they're not. For touching, we do have some that we encourage people to play with. So some Froebel blocks that people can play with that were loaned from the Figgy's outreach collection. Yeah. So I actually used to take them out to schools when I was at the Figgy as uh -huh. an outreach educator. That's how you knew they were there. That's how I knew they were there. <laughs> Bring them over here. Yeah, I right, need them. Right. The other thing that's that's so well known with German heritage in the Quad Cities is Chris Kindle Market. It is yeah. coming up Saturday, December 9th. Mm -hmm. It is at the German American Heritage Center yeah. on your fourth floor. What can people expect? Uh, well, it goes from 10 to 2. It's free admission to the museum that day. Um, you get to check out 20 craft vendors that are all making things, unique items for the holidays. We have our gift shop, with hat, which has, you know, wooden toys and nutcrackers and pyramids and glass, hand-blown glass ornaments. So it's a really, I don't know, like unique gift opportunity to come down and, and check it out. There's even food this year, so that'll be good. Well, I was going to yeah. say, I mean, if you're thinking of, like, as you said, it's, it's craftsmanship, it's homemade. Right. It is kind of a unique gift experience. And, right. and there are people that you know this so well that come back year after year after right. year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I think the vendors each have their own pull, you know, because of the following that they have. And we have ours for our market that we do. And we do three markets throughout the year, but this one's always, you know, a little extra special with Christmas. Right. Uh -huh. This is your first, you're almost one year that's, as that's executive right. director yeah. of the uh, German American Heritage Center. That's your first Christmas. Uh -huh. Tell me, 11 months under the belt, what's it been like? I mean, what, what, are, what, are, what have you found as, as the, the most unique challenges that you've had? Unique challenges? Hmm. I guess I just want to make sure that everybody knows we're a museum. You know, as we go throughout the community, there still seems to be some confusion of what we do. And so we want to make that clear everywhere we go that we're a museum with exhibitions to come. So we have a permanent installation that you mentioned earlier, the German Immigrant Experience. But then we also have two rotating spaces, so right now, one has the exhibition on uh, German toys, and the other has art from our archives that we've pulled out that some of it has never even been displayed before. So. Well, the other thing is that the, the Standard Hotel, where you're located, mm -hmm. underwent a number of renovations in order for it to be handicapped accessible. It is, right. it, you might look at the building and go, this is a four-story building, I can't handle it, but you can. Oh yeah, I mean, we've got, thanks to a lot of good people and organizations in our community, 
we were able to put an elevator onto the building. So if you look at the building carefully, you'll see that the brick changes you know, on the north side. And that's what was done in 2009 to get access to the whole building with an elevator. It's all accessible. Don't let the yeah. building intimidate <laughs> right, yeah, you. Yeah. You've also got uh, the, the Bremen Town musicians coming up. Yeah. And the, you're going to help me? Eulenspiegel? O Eulenspiegel. Eulenspiegel Puppets. Yeah, right. That's really unique. It is. I mean, they're unique. And I should say uh, Saturday, December 16th. So yes. tell me about yeah. this. Well, and there's also, so there's part of it is a performance where they're going to be giving a performance of that uh, grim fairy tale. But then also there's going to be later a workshop where you can make uh, puppets. So check it out. And it's free. So that's thanks to the Day Foundation. We're able to offer that for free. And um, it's a really cool company. It's a, the Oil and Spiegel Puppet Theater Company, which is in Iowa. And um, it's just, it's kind of like a amazing that they're here in Iowa. They do such cool, unique work and performances, and they work with arts organizations throughout the state. And it's just, we're so happy to have them here for one uh, in December, and then we're going to do another one in January. So, so once again, is this is this a family thing? I mean, is this something that kids would, you know, be able yes, to do? Yes, this would definitely be a, a family opportunity to bring kids out and see um, the puppet performance and even take place in the workshop would be kids too. We're yeah. also talking about an anniversary for you. Uh, yeah. 2024 marks 30 years That's right. uh, for the German American Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. What do you have planned for the coming year? Well, we are really excited to revitalize some of our galleries. You know, as you mentioned, we we don't do like some of it's permanent. So how do you how do you kind of re-engage that content in new ways? Do you make um, new signs or rotate out other objects? So we're interested in looking at those things. But probably the most exciting thing would be that we're making a kids space. So a space that's going to come alive with interactive activities for kids to come in and, and learn through doing. And uh, that's that's what we're excited about in 2024. You were part of a much bigger organization, being with the Figgy yeah. uh, and, and being you know a, a larger encompassing uh, uh, workspace. Right. This is more of a niche, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's got to be somewhat rewarding uh, to be able to run a, a museum or a historical building of its size mm -hmm. that still has such import to the community. It, yeah, well, of course. Yeah, I mean, it feels great. I think that uh, it's amazing to get to new, like meet all the people that are involved with the organization and how many people were there when they were ripping the boiler out of the basement or filling it in, you know, and they're still so dedicated to the organization. I'd say that's probably one of the most interesting things personally is meeting all the people that have been involved um, and throughout the community and that really love and are dedicated to the space. Brian Allen, executive director of the German American Heritage Center. The center is open each day except on Mondays. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device, and streaming on your computer. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues of the cities. Whelan Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities.